Hi everyone, welcome to the Patch It Podcast. Joining us today, and we have a very special guest, and you guys will know him if you've been watching the podcast for the past few episodes. And it is my fellow founder and COO of Patch It, Carl Murray. Hi Justin. You're supposed to say Q because it sounds cool, but never mind. <laughs> So, Carl, I'm just going to go straight into it because the first podcast was about me and Mark. And today, I just want to, well, we want to give people a little bit of insight about you, who you are, what makes you tick. So, if you can tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so uh, I'm I'm Carl. Um, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, <laughs> no, I... Uh, straight to the point. <laughs> yeah, straight to the point. That's, that's kind of the person I am. Um, known Justin since probably 2018, maybe a bit sooner. Was it? I thought it was 2017. It might have been. It might have been one summer before I went to uni. Mm. It um, was the summer before you went to uni. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I met Justin summer of 2017. Uh, did a bit of work experience with his previous company, New Gen. Um, was there for ooh, probably two months. Two months, I believe. Yeah, yeah with a classmate, Jamie. Uh, doing some game development stuff, which that's what I was studying at Gator College and later at Teesside. Uh, went away, finished off my degree at Teesside for a year and left Teesside with the grades, but no real paths to go down, if that makes sense. Um, so I did whatever clever student does and waste the rest of your student loan and booked myself a holiday. While on this holiday, I got a text from Justin saying, hi, buddy, are you around? And I was thinking, you know what, I've waited months, nothing back. And then as soon as I'm out of the country, someone asks if I'm around. I'm like, okay. I was like, no, sorry, bud, I'm uh, I'm out of the country. Um, I'll be back in a week. Uh... <laughs> you know uh, what, I actually remember that conversation because when I texted you, I was in Tesco's. I, don't, <laughs> I think I was getting lunch. And you said you were in Turkey. Were you in Turkey? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For a week. And um, you said, oh, yeah, I'll get back in touch when I'm back. Yeah. And when I got back and we actually organized a date to for me to come down to the office and stuff, I actually went to Tesco's first and I actually met you there. <laughs> it was just random. You were just there. <laughs> uh, th- th- this podcast isn't... Um sponsored by tesco not yet at least um, but yeah did you like that we just picked you up or did i walk down with you i can't remember no you could give me a lift <laughs> <laughs> weirdest job interview i've ever had <laughs> oh man that was fun um, but yeah but yeah that you know we, we um reconnected then uh and i remember it wasn't really an interview was it, it was more of a catch-up and you guys sort of went into what you were sort of trying to do at new gen at the time i remember being asked to watch this 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 video um it was poorly explained by the person that you were working with there um oh. the the person basically made us sit there in silence watch the video and then turned around and said can you do it and, I, and me being who i am was like yeah we can do that and next thing you know a week later i am head of XR running a small team and I remember going home and just thinking what the hell have I got myself into why did I open my mouth and um yeah that started my time at new gen oh uh, bless him he he did it. he tried his best didn't he he tried his best yeah um, and you know being fresh out of university and just you know being the sort of person i am i don't really like turning down a challenge so in a way it was it was it was good for me because i think since 2019 i think i've grown a lot as a person especially like in this sort of environment mm-hmm. i've so i've sort of became um i don't know what the word would be sort of I can do things by myself now, you know, um, I don't need to rely on like a boss. So sort of, like be part of a team, be a good team member, encourage people around me and stuff. And to go from working with Justin, no, sorry, working under Justin to working with Justin 
I think it's just, um, uh, what was it, trial by fire, working on the job. It was sort of like that, but great experience. I think, you know, I, I was coming out of uni thinking, oh, I'll have a sort of a junior role somewhere, do that for three years and see where it takes me. But I think without knowing, I think just being thrown in at the deep end did me a world of good. Absolutely. I mean, I sort of had a very similar, I guess you could say, upbringing in the um, business um, world. You know, it was very similar to what happened to you. You know, so I, I believe that it brings the best out of you. You know, whatever you don't know, you try and learn on the spot or at least find ways to learn it, you know. Um, so, like, can you tell us a little about a little bit about the transition from, like, obviously, it's very different. Um, doing university, well, going to university. I myself haven't been, but um, you doing university work so day to day, your workload, you know, you have to do this, you have to do that. Compared to what you're doing when you were working as head of XR, and compared to what you were doing now. Um, there's a lot of crossovers, really. I think, I think I'm so very lucky in a way for my education path to go from years of college to T side uni. Because Gator College, you know, I, I'll probably take this to my deathbed, like Gator College has got to be one of the best colleges out there because when I went to Teesside Uni, the group of um, people that I went there with from Gator College, we were just like prepared for anything they could throw at us. Um, we knew how to deal with challenges. We knew how to do projects. We knew how to do this and that. Whereas other people on the course were no disrespect to them, we're like a, a step behind. So we were very prepared for that. So we learned all the, the technical skills and sort of the, the project management stuff at gets at college. But Teesside taught the same stuff, but actually give you the freedom to put that into practice, you know, control your learning, control your projects. And that was the, I think the biggest skill I took from there and implemented into what the role I had in, with new gen. So managing my own projects, um, building a team, getting people to work essentially. I think the only thing I found hard was talking to customers um, because I never really did that. Like I say, I'm very laid back, sort of borderline introvert. Um, but people that know me will probably not think that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that was that was that was interesting. Just to this day, I find selling weird. <laughs> you know, it's like I have this thing. Give me your money. You know, I haven't really grown comfortable with that yet. So that's sort of a skill I'm trying to learn. I am learning, sort of thing. For free with new gen, yeah, new gen was a um, we had time. We probably get more into that, but I think the role I am now with Percha is it is sort of leaning on that, you know, teamwork, project management, getting people motivated to do the work, keeping things ticking along nicely. Um, and operations is just basically a glorified word for project management. And I think even because. My team is fairly small and majority of the team are co-founders in the business, but I still feel comfortable enough to go to each and every one of them and say, listen, I need this thing. We need this thing for the project. We need it for purchase. And I think that's the good dynamic that we have. Um, you know, we're a diverse team with various experiences from different sectors. Um, different years under our belt. I know I've only got like was it three years under my belt? Opposed to to Mark, who's got thirty five years of experience, but it it just works. And I think anyone coming into the team will say that from day one that there's a there's there's a good dynamic here. Absolutely, and um, I'm going I'm going to try as much as I can not to talk about pear shit. Um, but would you like to explain what pear shit is and what it does? Yeah, so Perchit operates in the ad tech space, so advertising technology. And we're really focusing on traditional advertising, 
and product placement. So traditional advertising is your yeah, out of home billboards, posters that you see um, in your town centers and your shopping centers, um, billboards that you see when you're driving past. Um, and product placement, that's in TV and movies. The, uh, the, the odd example that I use for product placement is um, a well-known frozen potato brand, would you call them, in a, in a soap on ITV. So, you know, you see them all the time. Sometimes you don't know they're there. But what Purchase allows you to do, well, at least the product of Purchase allows you to do, is um, it's an app that you can use to scan and discover, essentially. And from that discovery, you can learn more. You can make a purchase on items that you see on an advert in a TV show. And for brands, it's it's a, an extension to their marketing mix. It's it's something that I don't feel many brands know it's there. Obviously, they know about the traditional advertising, but sometimes they use it just as an extension to their brand. And the conversion on the back of that is sort of a, a maybe. They don't really know what the conversion is for that. So I think with purchase for brands, it's it's an extension of their brand as well because you know we're getting people to engage with their out of home or their product placement. But it's actually converting those sort of passive consumers into an active one, and it's just a way to make their ads do more and engage with their their customer base in a in a fun way through an app. You know, everyone uses apps. And this is a, it's one of those apps where, you know, you, you think Uber, you know, boom, I've got a taxi or Uber eats, boom, I've got some food. Purchase is of, of there's a nice pair of trainers on that advert. That I, I kind of like them. Oh, I've got the Purchase app. I can get them straight away. So it's just, uh, I think it's, it's an interesting product for both B2C and B2B. And, um, yeah, I know this isn't all about purchasing and stuff, but you know, I'm just just don't know what the word would be. Excited to be part of purchase. It's uh, absolutely it gets you out of bed in the morning because you know it's we've obviously we we spoke so much and dream so much about purchase and what it can go, what it can be, what we feel it can be. Um, there's but there's a lot of a lot of patience to be had, but it's it's been fun. It's, it is fun. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things. It's, it doesn't happen overnight, doesn't it? it? It doesn't happen within a year. You know, we have to have a lot of patience. We have to go through a lot of obstacles, um, which a lot of people will understand. Um, so my next question will be, Carl, is from the very beginning when we started Perch, can you describe that journey from the very first time you heard about Perch to where we are now? Can you describe or give some feedback to what what has happened so far? Um, I think I remember the very first time you mentioned Purchase, and uh, I think we were on lunch, and you sort of kind of mentioned it. And to be honest, I don't think I was paying much attention. Um, well, you said a few things that I was perked my ears up and thought mm, maybe. And then you said, then you sent me this document. And I thought, oh, it's just going to be a one-page thing. I'll read this in my spare time. <clears throat> Spent the whole night reading it, like three or four times. Um, it was just a, a, it was just a collection of random rambles, but it kind of made sense, and the idea was there somewhere. So the, this is the, the Purchase Master document, which I think when we're rich and famous should be published up and released. Yep. <laughs> Because you had you had pictures in there from Fight Club, and you had um, ideas and avenues of where you can make money, and you had interviews with people that you know you know from where our office is based at Proto. Um, some people that have sort of been there and done it with this similar technology, but in a different space. And there was even um, a passage where you're just talking to yourself, which. I, which <laughs> 
which I found very entertaining to read. Uh, I still do that, you know. I still talk to myself. <laughs> but no, it was good, and despite the the length of the document, the the essence of what Purchase is now was in there. I was thinking back then it was a lot of, you know, it'll be like ER and things like that, and we sort of when we got our heads together, we sort of stripped it back a bit and got rid of the unnecessary stuff and sort of, um, what would you say, sort of rank things. So, like, this is more important, this should be in. Mm -hmm. Well, at the time, it was like, if we ever build it. Now it's like, oh, shit, we built it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it was, yeah, so there was a lot of, conversation on what if you know what if this and what if that and a lot of uh dreams and things but everything was recorded you know everything we we said and did was written down on notes or chucked in a document and then out popped what purchase is now so i think this is was um a lot happened in 2019 post august didn't it I think it's about um, this year, last year, this time last year, when no. we finally started going forward with things. April, Mayish, yeah, or March, maybe March. But even back in 2019, because I joined you in August, things went <laughs> things went pretty south. October, we um, we sort of doing that job but also sort of like planning for purging in the background mm -hmm. uh, i think we incorporated it in december 2019 but obviously with our commitments and sort of things that were happening at new gen we sort of it was a side project really and then um yeah march i want to say it was around the first lockdown yeah it was definitely around that time I think yeah. So I think the 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 weeks either side of the official lockdown, um, that's when we sort of brung Mark involved as well. And to be honest, I think Mark was the catalyst for us to say, "Listen, we should focus on this." Mm -hmm. You know, the business that we're in is sort of dead. You know, let's let's just stop talking and let's actually do it. And yeah, it was slow because I think everything was just slow at that time. Um, the lock, first lockdown was a shell shock for everybody because no one really understood what it was and things like that. So business was slow. Businesses transitioned to online. People's family lives, home life completely flipped on its head. And for us, it was, okay, we're, we're, we're focusing on this now. So where do we start? And the first thing as an entrepreneur is, you know, we need to make money for this thing. It's like, okay, well, we can't actually start making money because, you know, we don't have a product. We don't have that to sell. So what do other people do? They look for funding. So that's what we did. We scrambled the the internet and the, the common places for funding. And we just did that month by month. But we were also working on, like, People would say the boring stuff like the legal side and all that stuff. Sort of just building the foundation for if we ever do get some good luck with funding, we're ready. And that good luck came in, say, September, October. When I think it was October when we, because we applied for the Innovate UK grant, um, one of their grants that they were doing. Uh, we found out the news in October. And then the following month november we we started development really production of it and that's what we've been doing for six months to present day and um yeah very busy six months very productive six months we've built a team of, of six and got a good relationship with our development partners over at nebula labs so we've got the product on the verge of being like to the point where we're like okay people can people can see this now um so yeah you know six months of just working and working and 
<laughs> we rewarded ourselves with a week off, which didn't turn into a week off because <laughs> <laughs> some of us were working on other things. Um, we are all involved at in some capacity with Pre Accelerator Startup Boost, so that's sort of our sort of our like what would you call it like fun side thing we do fun side of business yeah (laughs) so yeah i just think it's it's you know it's been a long a long year a long couple of years but you know we've just been patient and we've built it slowly we haven't rushed into things um yeah things are about to ramp up but I'm glad we took our time with it and we're actually in a position where it was like we have the product built and it's getting built in the right way. And it's not rushed and it's not just built and thrown out there. We've actually thought about it. Mm-hmm. So I think we're, we're in a good, we're on the verge of something. We've done something good, but we're on the verge of something better. Absolutely. So I've got one more question for you. And um, one more like sort of work slash businessy type question regarding the company that you're working with at the moment. Um, where do you see Percha and you within um, five years and then within 10 years? I think um, five years, I think it's very realistic for us to be in a bigger market. Um, whether that be the American market or the Asian market, I think we can expand into a market fairly quickly within five years. Um, me myself, I would I would like to be that that person that's globe trotting trotting from office to office. Um, I very much like traveling. Only in economy, we can't afford first class or business. Okay, only in economy. <laughs> you should uh, you should see my six foot frame in economy it's like um elf when he had a bath <laughs> um <laughs> but yeah like you know if i can combine my love for traveling with work i think i'd just be a very very happy person and in 10 years where will we be in 10 years <laughs> you know what i mean perch it on mars who knows um <laughs> but no i think in 10 years i think it would be great to be the world leader in this space you know the 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 go-to in in scan and discover advertising mm-hmm. would that be the word yeah in multiple markets around the world millions of downloads millions of active users you know i can throw numbers and numbers at this thing but i think and it's not because i'm really passionate about it it's because it just makes sense that this would take off that's not being egotistical or anything. It's just like, think about it. You know, just think about it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it makes sense. I mean, I, I, I know what you mean. I sometimes get lost in the stars, um, or sometimes just like veer off daydreaming about what the potential is of what we're doing. Um, so I totally understand, and I'm sure a lot of businesses do the exact same. Business owners or people who's got those sorts of ideas um so it, it it makes a lot of sense and at the end of the day it's our company it's our business you know you have that right to do that you know to, to just like because you, you're banging on yourself at the end of the day you know and if you don't believe in yourself who else is gonna you know um, so like just coming off um a little bit more about the business stuff and going into more of a personal set of questions for you um it still has something to do with business and your journey so far um from coming out of university you said you thought that you'd be working as a junior in a games company Uh, can you explain the sort of mindset shift from coming out of university to where you are now and what were the main triggers that made that happen yeah so i think the first thing is um i think my my route into my I consider this like new general, my first real job, the first thing I really committed to. So uh, what I learned is that I had to you know, shake off those those education shackles very quickly and adapt to you, the real world. Because it was I did it's not like I walked into a 
you know, a job where there was like, I've got a manager and I've got teams and all that stuff. It was very much, you know, everyone's seemingly on a level playing field and everyone helps each other. But there is a bit of uh, independence that you have to have there, especially like the role that um, you guys bless me with, having my own team and things like that. Uh, so I had to grow up, is that the word? Very quickly into into that role. Um, but it's weird because I, I sort of did have the self belief that I that I could do this, and it wasn't like it's just like that didn't even make sense what I just said. It's not like I was just being like here's some stuff, do it. It was like there will be a sort of guidance there. It's not like you were working over me and telling me what to do, but it was like, we've got this thing. Do you think you can do it? And then sort of who do you know that can help? And I think transitioning from new gen to purchase, I think I'd learned a lot from bad experiences, if I'm honest. There was a lot of things that happened behind the scenes at the previous company that weren't weren't the best situations to be in and I think I learned from bad practice and bad experiences and bad people you know because we had some we had some interesting times at new gen Absolutely. I think we, and I think we all learned that as well so coming to purchase it was like okay we might not know everything but at least we won't do what happened there Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I think the big thing I took from it is, like, yes, we're a team, but you have to stand on your own two feet and be a bit independent. And with Perch, I like to think that we have a, a team culture where everyone has a voice, where we didn't really have that. Uh, in the past, it was sort of like, you know, egos got in the way and, things yeah. can get done and but here it's like yes there is a, a, a tad bit of ego sorry justin oh, no, that's fine. Go on. there is a tad bit of ego but it's not like i'm better than you it's more like this is my experience this is what i've dealt with what do you think it's like it's a it's sort of a, a fair economy that we're, we're sort of running a purchase which is chalk and cheese better than what happened in the past yeah, I mean, I, I suppose just talking about the last company, there was a lot of sort of external strings that was being pulled, you know, even though they weren't on paper part of the business, they still controlled the business because of the new person that we brought in, you know. Um, but yeah, let's not get into that. Um, I'm happy to get into it if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll save that for a different day. Um <laughs> But yeah, so like, uh, obviously, you're in this position now, right? You, you've got your mindset of, you know, I'm doing this, you know, you, you, you're you motivated to do what you're doing now. But obviously, as an entrepreneur, you come up with new ideas on, on the reg, you know, um, sometimes, um, like we spend half an hour, an hour talking about new ideas. So like, have you noticed like a massive difference? like compared to, I guess, when you were working at New Gen to where you are now, just with the way your mind works? Yeah, I think that what startups do, what businesses do, what entrepreneurs do is they look for problems and they look for a way to solve them. So I think my mindset now has been, you know, especially with purchase, we, we spent a lot on like, what is the real problem? And even with our own ideas, it's like, okay, I've got this idea, but what problem is it solving? Will people want the solution to that problem? So I think I, I look at things in a different way. And it's, it's sort of good and bad in a way because you feel like you are looking for problems a lot that don't exist. But uh, I think that's, you know, the... I, I I'm I'm looking in a way because I can come to you or, or, or Mark and say, listen, I got this idea. What do you think? And if it's shot down straight away, that's fine. <laughs> you know, um, 
there's always another idea or the, there's always another solution. So I think the main thing is just looking at things in a different mindset um, and having the confidence to actually go to people with that idea. I think we learned very quickly that no idea is precious. Mm-hmm. We also learned very quickly that you might have an idea that's great in your head, but people don't really care. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know, I think one thing for a lot of young entrepreneurs is I'm very protective over this idea. I need people need NDAs and all that. When at the end of the day, it's like the chances of someone actually stealing your idea is fairly slim. So two things there, you know, having the confidence to have an idea and speak about an idea. Maybe three things. And then just understanding that, you know, get over yourself. It's it's just an idea and there's millions of ideas that have been rehashed and put out there and making loads of money. So if you've got an idea, don't be yeah, don't don't be too protective of it. Because in a week's time it might not be your idea anymore. Absolutely. I mean, if you think about it, every new thing has been done before. It's just deployed differently. Um, and you could, yeah. yeah, you could look at f- Facebook, YouTube, you know, it's all been done before, but it's deployed in a different way prior to them coming out. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's, things. it's not just what the platform is, it's, it's, it's branding. There's so many different things to attribute into a, a company's success. Very true. And it's every sector from social media to video games to streaming services to how you travel and how you find love. You know, there's millions of dating apps and, you know, there's, there's an, the origins of one idea. So like Facebook, for example, that's the, the big boy in social media, but it didn't stop Twitter doing what they're doing. It didn't stop LinkedIn doing what they're doing. It didn't stop instagram doing what they're doing they found their niche and they went with it absolutely so um i guess my next question is what what do you think you'd be doing now if you didn't go if in that meeting that we had a couple of years ago you said actually no this is a little bit out of my depth i don't think i can do it you know if you didn't take that opportunity what do you think you'd be doing like right now at this very second um well hopefully you know i if i did do that i would have went back to what i was doing and trying to pursue a role in the games industry i did have a soft sort of lead in somewhere but wasn't really for me and it meant moving so i don't know i i think it would have been in the games industry in some capacity because at the time, it's like I didn't know I would enjoy what I'm doing now as much as I would have. Mm-hmm. It was, it was, it's something to be honest. It's something I never even thought of. Remember, I did a, um, a sort of an interview with a good friend of mine who's a, a games journalist, and he asked me, "Is like, did you always have the idea for a business or the love for being an entrepreneur?" And it's like, to be honest, the word entrepreneur didn't even enter my mind until I met Justin. And it's and it's like uh, yeah, it's, it's it's something that I didn't know I would enjoy, maybe because I wasn't aware of it. Um, so at that time, if if that was the blue pill red pill situation with you, Jen, it's like nah, I wouldn't have known. You know, you know, what I mean? you never know. Yeah, <laughs> unless unless I think it comes down to anything, isn't it? Any decision you make. You have a A option, you have a B option. If you take A, what will happen? If you take B, what will happen? You know, you don't really know. You, you never know. You never really know. But, um, yeah, grateful for that opportunity. And I'm glad I had some confidence in myself to say yes. Because, you know, uh, like I said, I'm borderline introvert and I could have easily just said no. But, no, I, I pushed myself and... Yeah, learned a lot, <laughs> learned a lot and still learning. And, you know, it's just been a great journey so far. But, yeah, I don't know. What would I have been doing if I said no? 
job in the games industry or the door. I don't know. <laughs> Fair enough. Working at McDonald's. Free burgers for me. Yeah, I, I flip a mean pancake, so a burger is no problem. <laughs> uh, so last question before we crack on with the um, sort of the uh, outro and ending. Um, so apart from Perchett, because I know you said before that it makes you, you know, it gets you up in the morning. What other things in the world gets you up every day? Um, I think it's the the excitement of not knowing where the day will take me. Because in the role I am, uh, I am a bit of a, a firefighter. You know, the, the, something happens, I, I'm sort of the, the first to bring it up and try and get it solved. So I think just the day to day stuff of Percha is it just it just motivates me to do work. And then other things, it's like, you know, I get up and I know people say you shouldn't do this, but I jump straight on my phone and see what's happening. You know, I've been asleep. What happened? What's happened in Asia? What's happened in America? You know, what's happening in the startup scene? Um, because I have slowly fallen in love with the startup ecosystem i think it's a very very interesting space you know the the big boys of facebook and google don't interest me anymore i want to know what um and i, I want to know what the future generation is doing i want to see what ideas they're bringing to the table and that's why i've i've sort of jumped in really to help mark with startup boost because, yeah, I'm there helping Mark with his, his notorious tech issues. But for me, it's a way to learn um, from speakers, mentors, and the cohort themselves. You know, they bring new ideas that gets me thinking. And, and I think, oh, what could this be used for? Can it be used in purchase? You know, what benefit will it have? So, yeah, just just... Waking up every day and knowing that you could learn something new is the main driving factor, I think. Absolutely, that makes sense. It's sort of like an insight to the future, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's you know, I want to know what you know. <laughs> there's a there's a the, I brought this up with in the second episode of the podcast. There's a 14 year old kid. He's an entrepreneur on Twitter. And I still, back then I didn't know his name and still then I, I keep forgetting his handle or I would have shouted about. But he's 14 years old and he asked people to say, oh, um, put your uh, product in, in, in the comments and I'll give you some honest feedback. And it's some of the best feedback I've ever seen in my life. Brutally honest, straight to the point from a 14 year old kid. And it's like, that's the person that I want to see where they'll be in six years time you know what, what they're in it now what they're going to do in the future that that's really exciting to watch mm -hmm. and i guess it goes back to persian it's just like what can we take from these little things and implement in ourselves so like i say i just like learning stuff and um so a bit about me i, I like my sports i like my football i like my rugby so coming up is uh, the Lions tour in July. So the British and Irish Lions are a rugby team consisting of England, Wales, Scotland, and Ireland. And their coach, who's who's coaching them in July, was on a podcast, and he was talking about how he balances, um, how he trains his team and stuff like that. And he was talking about meetings and things. He was saying, "Oh, people have their their team out there for like." two hours you know and he's like oh i'll have a i'll have a, an hour training session and instead of a, an hour meeting i'll have a 20 minute meeting and he was like he says so we have 20 minute meetings and we did we're doing the 20 minute meetings but then we're, my assistant was going through 12 points and he was like he was like sure not be funny mate i i wouldn't remember these 12 points get it down to three and we'll go from there so little things like that it's like okay, could we do 20-minute meetings? Could we have three main points that we talk about for the week? Um, 
and then there's other things like how you work in a week. So I've been reading a lot around the four day week, four day work week, and have Friday as a catch up week, catch up day. Sorry. So it's just little things like that from team culture, how you work, um, just little things that I think I could bring to the table and really help us as a business succeed and not get burnt out because I think burning out is a real reality in today's world. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, absolutely. I, I'm weird. I, I, I watch and take inspiration from anywhere and, anywhere and everywhere. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I think that's just the way the world works nowadays, you know, especially with the internet. There's so many different things that can, you can get inspiration from, you know, but I do agree that burnout is a real thing and everyone needs to keep an eye out on that. Um, especially if you're in a startup, if you're in a small team and you're working like almost 24-7, I need to keep an eye on your sanity. Um, so just to sort of wrap up, um, Carl, have you got Anything you want to shout about, about anything that's happening in the near future um, or anything that you want to share? Yeah, so a few things for me back on purchase stuff. Um, we have good links with Gator College. Um, so there could be an opportunity to do an event with them in June. Um, so that's very exciting. Um, no doubt we'll be posting about it on socials when that's confirmed. I think June really is going to be a big month for us because we are on the hunt for people to sign up as early adopters for the app. Um, again, we'll be pushing that out on social media. Uh, for myself, you know, I'll, I'm looking forward to going outside. I want Rio Steakhouse and Newcastle to open up again. Absolutely. <laughs> get the meat on swords out um yeah just personal stuff you know i'm just i'm just being very fortunate that we're getting to the tail end of this pandemic and you know our family has has been relatively okay you know my heart goes out to everyone that suffered during this losing loved ones and things i think again that's another motivating factor is to get back to some normality you know i'm gonna break the news now purchase is moving office and again i'm excited about that people might think you know us like oh they're moving again but yeah we're moving again for the betterment of our of our business we're expanding the team through kickstart so i can't wait to see who applies through kickstart and have some new team members in um but yeah, that's, I know it's all business stuff, but it's like, that's all I have going for me. <laughs> no, yeah, just, I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, I know Carl mentioned Rio Steakhouse there. Um, and um, I'm not going to lie, I do love that place. Actually, everyone in the team loves that place. Um, so, you know, I haven't prompted Carl here. I'm probably going to get flack from Mark, but. If you've managed to get to this part of the um, the podcast, we're going to run a little competition, right? We're going to run a little fun competition. If you tag someone who you'd like to take to Rio on the comment section, we'll choose five people to take to Rio, all expenses paid for a night out with the Perchard team. It'll have to be in the Newcastle gate today. It'll though. have to be in the Newcastle and gate today. That's the only thing. So we're going to take, actually, you know what? Not five. We're going to take 10 people out to Rio. All expenses paid. Apart from drinks, you get your liquor and we'll get, well, we'll feed you meat. We'll, we'll give you our meat, you know? Um, so all you have to do is actually just tag someone that you'd like to go with. So if you tag someone, we'll choose both of you, that you and the person you tag. So you got five five lots of two that can win, okay? And if you share, that'd be awesome, you know? Um, but yeah, we'll do that randomly. We'll choose five um, people who's tagged someone. So that's 10 people altogether that we'll take out with me, Carl, Mark, and potentially Katie to Rio Steakhouse for an all expenses played apart from your bar, you know, um, your bar tab. 
Can so, I can I can I add? <laughs> if you're wondering in a year, where did Perchic go? <laughs> <laughs> They're in Rio. <laughs> why why did they go bankrupt? Um just come back to this podcast and say told you so. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, it's a good place to network. It'll be a good time for us to network. You get to learn about us, you get to, we get to learn about you at the same time enjoying some really juicy, juicy, juicy meat. <laughs> On that. We we are thinking about doing an event. Yes. Um, I think we agreed on a blend of in person and virtual. We're still planning it. But if anyone is in, say, the advertising space or in the startup ecosystem or in the northeast business space, wants to have what what we were thinking, like ten minutes talks. Yeah, ten fifteen minutes um, for the that's for the marketing research sort of seminar or event that we're looking to do. Yeah, I think yeah, I'm very excited to haven't started planning it yet. Very excited to start that and get that in action. Yeah, but if you you know, like I said, in in those spaces and want to share your stories, maybe we do a live podcast there. Who knows? Um, yeah, I think that'll be fun. Again, we'll push that out on social media in the near future. But yeah, exciting times ahead, I think. Absolutely. So when do restaurants open up again? I have no idea, dude. I, I just keep staring at the Rio menu and just open and <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. Um, we'll, we'll put the Rio menu, keep, keep, that, keep that graphic. We'll put it on here. But yeah, so whilst I'm talking here, the Rio menu is going to be on here. So remember, you have to tag one person on the comments, right? And we'll choose at random five, um, five messages. So that'll be two per tag, uh, per, per winner. So like, if I tag Carl and we get chosen, it'll be me and Carl going to Rio with us. You know. So um, you know what? To make it a lot easier as well, we're not going to do it all as a ten group, like fourteen of us at the same time. We might do it at, um, two at a time. You know, yeah, because gonna... obviously there's a little bit of a scheduling problem there. But if we can do it all at the same time, we will do our best to, because I feel like that's a good time for us to get to know each other. You know, a bit of networking, a bit of event, uh, a bit of an event. You know, so I mean, it should be fun. It's, I mean, all you have to do is tag. You know, as simple as that. Who who you want? Who who you haven't seen in a year? Who who haven't you seen in two years' time? Tag him on there. You know, we'll add you to the list. We'll pull up five tags and then we'll all go to Rio. You know, that would be insane. <laughs> Hopefully Boris lets us. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But um, obviously if you, you know, you, you, you'll have to know when we draw the name. So make sure you follow our page or we'll, we'll drop you a line or an email or whatnot. Um, but no, I, I know I'm going to get some plaque for this, but why not? Let's do it. It's, uh, we'll call it our first marketing sort of event before we do more of the um, online ones, you know? Yeah, that, 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 yeah, that might backfire, but I'm looking forward <laughs> to seeing where that goes. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. But yeah, don't forget, tag someone that you want to go to a place where you eat a lot of meat on this um so it'll be on linkedin won't it on linkedin we'll pop yeah, it the hat choose five and then boom we'll all go i'll push it out on my twitter as well and my yes. twitter remember ah. you do have to be on in gateshead newcastle area yeah yeah interesting <laughs> <laughs> but yeah anyway, that's enough about rio but yes, so um, Carl, do you want to do a shout out of anything before I close this up? Um, yeah, I guess myself, feel free to connect on LinkedIn. I'm always open to connecting on LinkedIn. Uh, Twitter as well, at no money Murray. Um, I'm on other platforms, but those are the main two that you can find and engage with me. Uh, follow Perchett on all the platforms. I think we're on a lot of platforms now. We're at We Are Perchett on Instagram and Twitter. Um, it's just Perchett on LinkedIn and Facebook. Perchett on YouTube. We're also on TikTok. And I believe we're on Twitch as well, even though we haven't used it yet. But we're on there as well. Yeah, I believe so. Um, yeah, so just follow us for more. Um, yeah, 
this this has been a good one. I've enjoyed this. I've enjoyed being in this in the guest seat. It's been fun. Oh, that's good. Like um, I've actually thoroughly enjoyed like um, being the what do you call it, the host. So if you guys like the episode, don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to tag your friends on our LinkedIn page. Um, so it's been me and Carl, and this has been the Purchase Podcast. What the hell? What happened? Sorry, <laughs> carry on, Carl. We'll keep that in the podcast. <laughs> you just see my face be like, oh? <laughs> we'll, we'll keep that on. I've just been disconnected, but I'm back now.